Okay, now we're going to marinate the chicken now that it's all broken down. For those of you that are gonna be bringing in chicken that is already nine cut, the pre-cut chicken, please know that the thighs will not be dislocated or cleaned out. You do have to run that step so that you don't have the risk of serving a customer chicken that might be pink or undercooked inside. So definitely dislocate these even if your chicken is nine cut. It's very simple. We need one gallon or four liters of water and our chick eye marinade. So get the chicken out of the way for now. Chick eye comes in a 32 pound box and the scoop is already in the box. This scoop is six ounces. We need six ounces to go into this gallon. So we just take one scoop, level it off a little bit below the rim and we just add it to the water. And then we take our whisk and just mix it up to fully dissolve it. It'll appear milky a little bit and then it'll start to clarify. But once you have all the salt, there's no more moving parts, it's fully dissolved, it's ready to have the chicken put into it. And it doesn't matter what order you put it in, I'm gonna go right into the water with it. And we're doing one chicken right now, you can do up to six per gallon. So you can do up to 54 pieces of nine cut chicken in one gallon and six ounces. Now that our chicken is in the brine, we're gonna put it away in the fridge for eight to 12 hours. You wanna have it in there no longer than 24. Between eight and 12, it's the perfect saturation point for the marination inside the chicken. And know that this is the recipe for not only bone-in nine cut, but also for chicken tenders, chicken wings, boneless thighs, boneless breasts. Chick eye marinade is good for any kind of poultry, even outside of chicken, um, like turkey as well. But know that this works for any poultry and that this is not a complete batch. Thanks to TV Magic, we can see that this is what it will look like when it goes into your fridge. And that's how it looks with one gallon of water, six ounces of chick eye marinade, and six chickens in here, or 54 pieces. So before it goes into the fridge, we add our perforated lid so we can pour it off tomorrow. And that's ready to go for the night. So now our marination process is over. It's been 12 hours in the fridge. We've pulled it out and we can see our marination, our, our liquid has changed color to a lighter pink from what it used to be just clear. And that means it's pulled color out of the poultry um, so that it, it appears a lot whiter and brighter when the customer bites into it. And it also has infused a nice salty flavor um, to accentuate just the poultry notes in a, in a real fresh chicken. And now we'll use our perforated lid to drain off the majority of the liquid through our drainer. So we've gotten the majority of the brine out. Now we can remove our lid off to the side and put it right through our perforated drainer in the sink. So now that we've got the chicken out of our marination, out of our brine, we've got it into our drainer that's perforated. You can see the holes in the side. It's gonna drain off like this for about an hour before it's ready to be coated. It can be stored in the fridge like this now for up to five days. So it's had a preservative effect put into it now as well. So you can do all your marination for the first five days of service all in one day in large batches. And you can stack these in your fridge or do them in much larger containers depending on your volume. And to store it in the fridge, we don't want it dripping everywhere. So we put it into a solid bottom like so. And now it can go straight into your fridge just like this. Uh, we'll throw a lid on it quick and then it's away for storage. Ready to be coated in one hour. Okay, our chicken has been in the drainer for a minimum of one hour and up to five days. Uh, and that means we're ready to coat the chicken now. So very easy process. I'm gonna take a couple of pieces at a time, go into a bowl of, we chose magic coating today, but know that this process is the same for all different coatings. We have a spicy, crispy Cajun, we have a slow bro coating, and we have an extra crispy, and there are four other flavors. The initial process is always the same on all of our dry coatings. And that's the first two pieces. We're trying to get as much coating off of it as possible so that we don't waste money. Whatever sticks the first time is all you want. And I'm not gonna make you watch me do every single piece, so time lapse, go. So now that the coating's been applied in a single coat, we allow it to set up in the fridge for at least 45 minutes. It is good for the entire day in the fridge, so this can be done in the morning, and it allows the coating to set up and adhere to the chicken, so when it hits the oil, it doesn't fly off inside of the well. If you were going for more of a crispy feel, uh, a heavier coating or a double coating, this is how you'd accomplish that. Thank you. So this is a slurry that we have made up of 
the chicken coating in one to five ratio with water. So we have five parts water, about one part coating. We mix it nicely with a whisk. It's fairly thin. It does have the same coating that's in this bowl, just in the water. And once it's mixed, we take our chicken that has been sitting now for 45 minutes. We take it, it already has a, one layer of coating on it. We're going into the wet, back into the dry, and we're gonna pack on as much as we can. And it goes back onto the pan. Again, I won't make you watch me do more than two pieces, so time lapse, go. So that summarizes our coating process, the two different methods that we showed. On this side, we have our single coated chicken that just has one layer, good to be in the cooler for up to 24 hours. So this can be done in the morning before the restaurant's open and the chicken can be fully prepped, ready to pull off the pan and put into the broaster. This side, we have our double coat, which started with a single and then we went into the wet slurry and back into the dry. This second part of that process has to be done closer to when you're cooking it. So I would say within five minutes of double coating it, it needs to go into the broaster and be cooked. We have seven different coatings that are proprietary to Broaster Company and to Kendale in Canada, and all of them can be used in both of these methods. So for any information on all of the coatings and marinades that we offer at Kendale, please visit kendale.ca or find us on social media on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter.